it. So what's going on in sports? Eric Reed and give my boy a hard time. Again? I'm a Steelers fan. I love I love oh, they, the Steelers. I, okay, so I know something. Mm-hmm. I know that the Steelers blew out somebody the other day. Oh, it was Carolina. Hey, they got that work. It was like 52-21. Oh, shit. But what the problem was, Eric Reed, he made a great hard hit, and they kicked him out the game. He Why? got ejected. They said it was unsportsmanlike On what? Conduct. Does he and play for the Steelers? He plays for the Panthers, but he hit the Steelers' white quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> The rapist? Yeah, the rapist, exactly. I was talking about this at the barbershop. Uh, my barber, he was like, he was mad when he saw that because, again, it's so obvious that they're trying to give him the hardest time because I remember when they played the Eagles two weeks ago, Eric Reed, he had the game-winning interception, and they reversed the call and said that are he didn't catch ser- the ball. Why are they giving this to And oh, you could tell me? that he caught the ball, but they're giving wow. him the hardest time in the world. Yeah. Yeah, but he got ejected. That's the first time I've ever seen somebody get ejected a from a football game. game. Oh first game, one of the biggest got ejected. Are you serious? He, a hit because he hit uh, Andrew Andrew Luck. And see, I don't get that. Our big, the Bengals always getting ejected. Vontez is perfect every single time. That's facts. That's facts. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how it is. That's but but. I find that so strange. Like Eric Reed, every single week, it's been something, and seeing how he's been treated. It's been drama every week. And seeing how after he made the hit, it was everybody was trying to fight him, all this stuff. It's crazy. You know what? Uh, I was watching the uh, – have y'all seen the, the documentary, the Shut Up and Dribble documentary? Nah, Not yet. I've been checking it out. I checked it out last night. It, had two, it was two parts. I think they got more parts coming. But, Is it good? <laughs> yeah, it was real good. And I, I really um, – what's the one cat name? He's in the big three. Abdul. Um, oh, yeah. Um, Abdul Raouf. Something yeah, like that. Raouf. That, he was protesting yeah, in Abdul the 90s. Raouf, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, I mean, I, was, I, I knew about it, but just to hear that story and even just to hear how the NFL, I mean, not the NFL, but the NBA. Treated him. How they treated him, but the whole purpose of that documentary from what, what I uh, got from it, mm-hmm. they were saying, like, the narrative of black versus white. Mm. They were saying, like, the, the it was at a time where the, the uh, NBA was kind of dying down. And then the magic and the, oh, and wow. the thing came about. Mm. And then it became black versus white. It did. And then the second part started. They started talking about Michael Jordan being that black shade. Or how Michael Jordan, he didn't want to be seen as black. He wanted to be seen as a person. And, uh, Brian was having him talk about all this. Yeah. I respect and LeBron for that. Right, right, right. Like, that's the, thing. Like, it was a, the, the, the preview male. I saw it was him as a, like, as a child showing himself coming up. Are you serious? Nah, I didn't really go into Braun's story. Jamel Hill, it sounded like she was the one narrating it. She oh, was. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I saw that on the previews. I like that man. Shout out to Bron yeah, again. Even with um Bill Russell, he was saying how uh like he was playing a game and he was blocking. He kept on blocking him. He, you know he taller than yeah. So he blocking the shot. His coach told him like you can't block the shot. So Red Arbrack. He took a few plays off and stopped blocking it. And he was like, man, fuck it. This is how I play basketball. Facts. Man. It was started doing it. showing like how all this shit's been racist. Like, it, it bro, really crazy. it's always been like that. And speaking um about Bill Russell again, I remember it was a documentary. Magic versus Bird, no, Lakers versus Celtics, mm-hmm. 30 for 30. 30 yeah. They were saying how ticket sales were actually poor when Bill played for the Celtics, but when Bird played, it was sold out all the time. Mm-hmm. But Bill, he has what, 11 championships? And that's what they said. They right. said, uh, they was like, and it was, that's how they were saying the Magic versus Bird. Yeah. Like, the Celtics was this white team. Yeah. All white players. There you go. And the Lakers were Showtime, black flashy. Was black versus white thing. There you go. Every single Even time. With, uh, with Will, Will Chamberlain. What was his name at first? Uh, no, uh, Kareem. Al I mean, yeah, Al Cinder. Al Cinder. Lou Al Cinder. He was always the tallest, and he was they was treating him basically like an animal in the zoo. Wow. Because he was the tallest on the court, and it was crazy. Freaking nature, all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, it was a, it was a good documentary. It's crazy, man. Because I need to see that. Is it on Netflix? Uh, it's on Showtime. Showtime. That's what it is. But wow. it's like that's sports is like this it. microcosm of real life, but people don't view it that way. But sports, it really is. Sports, politics, everything. Sports, politics, all that stuff. And then how there's whitehead coaches because Warren Sapp, he was on Vlad TV. Great interview. Like if you guys want to check that out. But Warren Sapp, he was talking about a sports commentator. His name was Jimmy the Greek. But he got fired because he was straight remember. up one day. He was saying that now that white coaches, that they were afraid because it was all black teams now and they were the best players. And he said eventually that it's going to be black quarterbacks, black coaches. And he said that he'll be damned to, to see a black owner. So I think that these coaches and these owners still have that same fear to this day. But it's sad because we see – like Alabama, last night I saw them play, all black team. But we're talking about one of the most racist states in the country. And we have a white head coach, white boosters, all, all that stuff. Even Ohio State is yeah. a majority black. Like, 
I can't even remember the last time Ohio State had a white quarterback. Facts. Since Braxton Miller, when he was there. Terrell Pryor. Troy Parker, Smith. Troy Smith before Terrell And Parker. that was like 2008. Yeah. I don't think we had a white Since like Maurice there. Claret played, right? But he was a running back, but I think that they well, had a white quarterback. But what has that done to a, a black man in our psyche when you see only white people in leadership positions? Because if anything well, we has... We talked about that, and that's what I was saying. I yeah. think that's, that's, that's what... But that's the issue America I have with pushing. football. That's, that's the what I was issue. Saying. That's yeah. what I'm saying because if you think about all the black quarterbacks in the league, it's not that many at all. You got Cam Newton. You got Russell and Cam. Newton. He gets the hardest time in the world. Like you see, they did the Kaepernick. I hate. And even if you listen to the commentators, Joe Buck, I'm telling people that man's a racist. Every single time Cam, he would take the field. He would talk about how Cam, he's undisciplined at quarterback, or that he throws the ball wild. But he's an MVP. He played in a Super Bowl, and he's a number one draft pick. He's done all this stuff that most number one draft pick quarterbacks don't ever do. Matt Ryan, Joe Buck, he gets on the field. Matt Ryan, although he's been down uh, the offensive line, it's been terrible for him. His, uh, his receivers aren't, aren't kissing. Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck was drafted a year after Cam. Cam has played well above Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck gets every excuse in the book. He can't stay healthy because of his offensive line. Even, or even, doesn't have even, a running game. Even the Andrew Luck and RG3 thing. Right, you know, right. I, don't, I mean, I'm not saying Where's he at? Does he still play RG3? That's, that's, yeah. That, that was my point. Like, he plays for the Ravens. Andrew Luck is trash, but right. Andrew Luck can't stay on the field. I don't think he played a full season. Yeah. RG3, he, he's nowhere to be found in the league anymore. Like, yeah. If that was another quarterback, Andrew Luck would have lost his job right now. Best know. ability is being available. And I think that that right there, again, shows how – it's this double standard. Eli Manning. Yeah, Eli. He's still starting. I mean, the thing about Eli, though, he won championships. No, facts. Championship. Facts. But he got, the, he got that name. There you go. I'll say it like this. The two rings that he won, they were like nine and seven wild card teams. Barely even made the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And the years that he didn't go to the Super Bowl, they didn't make the playoffs at all. If this was a black quarterback, they would say that he's aging. It's time to move on. Younger talent, all that stuff. So it's this constant double standard. But Andrew Luck as well, that used to make me mad all the time. Because seeing how he's never on the field, he's always hurt. If he was black, RG3, he had the same issue. That's what I'm saying. Literally the same exact thing. Kirk Cousin came and took his job. RG3 was literally in the same predicament. But then they said that he was undisciplined. They love saying undisciplined, that he's not accurate, that he's too much of an athlete. Lamar Jackson, they said he was too much of an athlete and that he should play receiver. Andrew Luck, his athletic ability, it's amazing. So that's just how it is, but it's sad. But yeah, Kim, white coaches, <laughs> white GM, white owner, that's too white much quarterback. White. That's too much white. Black players. Got to have a white quarterback. Yeah, that's how it state, is. You know, the, at the end of the day, the quarterback is the, I guess, the superior position on the field. There you go. And then He's the smartest. And they want the white person to be that superior person. There you the go. The quarterback going to always win most valuable player. Yep. Most of the time, like you might get a running back or a defensive person. Every if that. Time, but Super Bowl come. The quarterback is going to win the, the Super Bowl MVP. There you go. It's just a narrative that they push him. Yeah. That's all what it is. Well, I hope that people pay more attention to what's going on. But no, I do recommend watching that Shut Up and Dribble. We're going to watch most Shut definitely. Up and Dribble. I will we'll, watch we'll, that. We'll talk about that. Um, follow our page, Connecting the Dots ATL.